Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai in India. Today I will briefly present the principles of treating genetically determined disorders of the skin, the so-called genodermatosis. The consensus of opinion among medical professionals and even lay people is that genetically determined disorders are incurable. Perhaps true, but with our better understanding of the downstream biochemical effects of the faulty genes, even if a cure is not be possible, relief from symptoms is definitely feasible. Broadly, the management of these inherited diseases can be considered under three headings. First, the eugenic measures, that is, selection and recombination of genes present in a population in a manner advantageous or desirable both for the individual and for the species in general. The term eugenics was first coined by Sir Francis Galton, a cousin and a friend of Charles Darwin. As a polymath and hailing from a very rich family, he could indulge in his whims and fancies as a student. In fact, he started as a medical student in Cambridge University, but quickly switched over to maths and that also he was not happy. So he started sailing the high seas like his cousin did. The term eugenics literally means good in birth. It described the application of the basic principles of agricultural breeding to humans. During the time of World War II, the term eugenic became a dirty word associated with racism and Nazism, a best forgotten phase in the history of genetics. When Adolf Hitler tried to breed a superior Aryan race, this was called a positive eugenics. Surprisingly, George Bernard Shaw, a famous British author, he agreed with this concept. He wrote, there is now no reasonable excuse for refusing to face the fact that nothing but a eugenic religion can save our civilization. Negative eugenics discourages reproduction of persons who carry undesirable traits. In 1909, the Indiana state in USA, they passed the compulsory sterilization law. They were uh, authorizing the sterilization of confirmed criminals. Other states followed suit and uh, by 1941, as many as 20,000 individuals in California alone had been sterilized under this law. From the USA, the law passed on to Nazi Germany and then to Switzerland and other Scandinavian countries, which enacted similar legislation. In 1939, with the World War raging, the Nazis introduced euthanasia one step further. Since they found sterilization was a very time-consuming, costly, boring method of stopping the multiplication of this undesirable people. They said, why not totally eradicate them, get rid of them. And so off all these people were sent to the gas chambers. Intense research in the field of uh, genetics by this scientific community soon showed that uh, eugenics had lost its credibility because the phenotypic expression of many of the genetic disorders is highly variable from a very mild expression to the most severe. Second, genetic engineering. It stands to reason that in all inherited disorders caused by gene mutation, the logical treatment would be to replace the mutated gene. Scientists are trying various methods of achieving this, but it is always a hazardous procedure since it may lead to a chain of events over which we may lose control. So at present, Gene replacement is still in its infancy, but anecdotally, success has been claimed in some of the severe genodermatoses like severe uh, genetic ichthyosis and epidermolysis bullosa uh, dysplastica. Third, euphemic therapy. This means altering the genotypic expression of an inherited disorder by dietary measures, drugs, surgical intervention, climate control, and so on. This euphemic therapy is the most promising and practical approach for inherited disorders at the present juncture. 
So I'll just give a few examples in each. We start with dietary measures. In phenylketonuria, which is an autosomal recessive uh, disorder of uh, great rarity, the enzyme missing is phenylalanine hydroxylase, as a result of which tyrosine is not formed and so no melanin. And these patients have very light skin, blue eyes, blonde hair. But the resulting backlash of the phenyl ketones accumulating in the blood damages the central nervous system. So to these patients, if you can totally stop giving phenylalanine, they develop normally both a cutaneous component, but more importantly, the neurological component. There is no neurological damage, they develop normally. And this is because phenylalanine hydroxylase is absent in these patients. Secondly, environmental methods. Temperature control. This can uh, produce symptoms in congenital ectodermal dys dysplasia, a, a condition where genetically these patients are born without sweat glands. So they have a horrendous time living in tropical countries during the summer months. So controlling the temperature can make them lead a reasonably normal life. Protection against ultraviolet light is a requirement for certain xenodermatoses like xeroderma pigmentosum, porphyria, and albinism because the UV will damage the skin so ultimately, these patients may develop cancer of the skin. Trauma avoidance, of course, is a must for children with epidermolase bullosa, where even trivial trauma can cause large blisters which get infected and eventually heal with scarring. Next is dietary therapy for inherited disorders. Replacement of a missing protein or enzyme is done in some cases. For example, in the Bruton type of A gamma globulinemia, Gamma globulin levels are very low and so you can give them periodic plasma transfusion and this prevents the severe infections that these patients develop at times. As far as enzymes are concerned, in a rare disease called angiokeratoma corporis diffusum or Fabry, there are numerous small angiomas on the skin with a keratin cover. This doesn't cause any danger to the patient. However, the same pathology exists in the internal organs. Multiple internal organs are involved, particularly the kidney. So by the time these patients reach the second decade of life, they develop severe renal failure and die from that. This is because of absence of an enzyme called ceramide trihexosidase. Now this enzyme has been purified and periodically administering this can prevent further damage to the internal organs. Replacement of trace metals. The most dramatic improvement with trace metal replacement can be seen in the condition called acrodermatitis enteropathica, an autosomal recessive disease. And it usually starts at the time when the infant is weaned off the mother's milk. The child who is developing normally suddenly develops diarrhea, loses appetite, becomes peevish, loses hair on the scalp, and also develops uh, pustular lesions on the hands, the anal region around the mouth. That's why it's called acrodermatitis. And it progresses and uh, within a few months, the child dies if left untreated. No satisfactory treatment was available until the latter part of last century when uh, uh, Moynihan from Sick Children Hospital, Great Ormond Street found accidentally that these children had very low levels of blood zinc. And uh, it was shown that uh, zinc absorption from the intestine is poor in these patients, which was genetically determined. So giving zinc orally, a dose of 3 milligram per kilogram body weight, produced dramatic results. No other clinical condition can you see such a dramatic improvement. And within a few days time, the child's diarrhea stops, skin lesions start healing, the hair grows, the child becomes active, smiling and starts putting on weight. And the uh, only thing is this zinc replacement has to continue throughout life. But fortunately, no long-term side effects have been reported with this type of prolonged zinc usage. Then we have a group called vitamin-dependent diseases. There are many, but I'll just take one for example, the so-called heart nups disease. This is a genetically determined disorder of tryptophan metabolism, as a result of which uh, enzyme deficiency, nicotinic acid, is not formed. So th these patients develop classical pellagra symptoms on the skin, the rough skin, uh, photosensitivity, uh, cerebellar ataxia, and all other symptoms that you see in the classical deficiency pellagra. So simply replacing the nicotinic acid, uh, 50 milligrams a day, will produce a dramatic improvement in the skin lesions as well as in the 
are the neurological manifestations. And finally, surgical treatment. You may wonder how surgery will help a genodermatosis. Just taking one example, it's a condition called Gardner's syndrome, which is characterized by multiple epidermal cysts on the face, scalp, and associated with numerous polyps in the GI tract. The polyps in the large intestine have a great tendency to become adenocarcinoma. So the present trend is if you diagnose Gardner's syndrome, these patients should undergo a prophylactic colectomy. So in conclusion, undue pessimism is not warranted. Undoubtedly, improved techniques of gene replacement paints a brighter picture in the management of these genodermatoses and as Walter B. Shelley, a famous American dermatologist said, never speak the language of despair, nor be the thief of hope for these patients with genodermatosis. Thank you.